Hey everybody. Yes, you read the thumbnail correct. Or maybe you read the title. I'm not really sure. I don't know what brought you here to watch this video. But out of the 330 videos I've done, I think I've done three that were specifically about Linux Mint. Now, if you think about Linux Mint, I think it's a great distribution. It's solid. It's working for a lot of people. And as a matter of fact, it was one of the first distributions that brought me to Linux. But about four years ago, they decided that they were going to branch away and stop producing Linux Mint as a KDE flavor. Now, this bugged me because I'm a KDE fan, but I understand their way around doing things. They wanted to hone in and just concentrate on Mate and Cinnamon and do their own little thing. And I've said this many times, and people will blow me up in my comments. It doesn't matter what the OS looks like as long as it's functional. Yes, I agree. As long as your OS is functional and it gives you what you want and lets you do what you need to get done, I totally agree. But there are some people out there that want that function and they want the form as well. They want it to look good. They want it to be flashy without losing any performance. Well, that's what we're looking at today. And that is Farron OS. This is a great distribution. This is a beautiful distribution. This is a distribution that is also built on an Ubuntu base. And it is a distribution that I will sit right here and say is better than Linux Mint. The reason I say it's better is because it has the form and function of Linux Mint, but at the same time gives you that flashy appeal. Now, there are going to be people that stop this video right here and say they could give a crap less about flashiness. But if you like the KDE desktop and you like something that's already pre-packaged with layouts and themes that are going to make your desktop look awesome, Farron OS is it. As you can see right here, we are at their website. I'll be sure to link that in the description below. They've been around for seven years and it's a free open source operating system. It's got a te fresh take, but a familiar look on a desktop environment you're used to. This is the most recent release. It come out this month. And basically it says it's designed around the user. You get a desktop that is easy to initially set up and then stays out of your way while you use your system. Whole world of applications, we've seen that before. Linux distributions are not a problem about getting good, up-to-date applications. But the store that they use is a very nice store, and I want to show it to you here in a second. And it lets you know it's made on a rock-solid foundation. It is a British Linux distribution, like I said, based on Ubuntu. And it's designed for security and privacy. And then you've got some reviews down here. And then if you go back up top, you've got news and help. And then get Farron OS. This is where you come over to download it. It lets you know what your minimum specifications are or minimum requirements. 1 to 2 gigabytes of RAM, 20 gigabytes of disk space, 64-bit, legacy BIOS or UEFI, a minimum of 1024 and 768 resolution. Internet connection is recommended. And then, of course, they do have a transfer tool. If you're switching from Windows, you can get the transfer tool to transfer all of your data. And then you can choose what Farron you would like to download. And then, of course, how to switch to Farron OS. It lets you know how to flash it, burn it to a USB drive, if you're coming from Windows, if you're coming from Mac OS or other OSs, and then installing on a newly built machine. So it's got a lot of great information there. So what we're going to do is we're going to stop talking about it, and we're going to get on over to the desktop. And if you download Farron OS, throw it on a USB, or open it up in a virtual machine, here's the screen you're met with. Right off the bat, they give you a little tour that you can go through. It basically says, Welcome to Farron OS. Before you begin, let's take a brief tour. So all you got to do is start tour, and it lets you know right here. They did some changes automatically. It detected that you were in a virtual machine, so it changed some things around so that it would operate better in a virtual machine. I'm going to go ahead and go next. Transferring files from Microsoft Windows. You're currently running Farron OS in what is known as a live session. This is a place you can access multiple Farron OS features. But you could actually open a transfer tool right here and transfer everything that you need off of your Windows install, back it up. That way when you install Farron, you can get it put right back on your system and not miss a beat. Farron helps you out with that, makes it easier for you. It lets you know you can open it here. How do you use it? what preparations are needed. You can go through all of that right here and it'll open up and take you to a website and give you step-by-step -step instructions on how it needs to be done. And there's a little wiki that shows you everything that you need to know. Video guide, launching the transfer tool, 
everything that you need to know right in here. So I'm going to close out of that and then what preparations are needed. So let's go ahead and hit next. Start installing Farron OS. You can install Farron OS from right here or view the Farron OS user guide or you can come up here and install from right here. Let's go ahead and click next. Get third-party codecs for many types of videos, music, and more. You can install those restricted codecs right here. We will go next. And then desktop mode. If you would like to, please choose the desktop mode that suits your device the most. Is it Farron OS default or tablet mode? I'm going to leave it on default. Let's go next. Using the desktop application menu, which is right down here. And then next. Using the desktop window management, which is right here. As you can see, that's your tour right there. You click on it, it opens and closes. Then you've got the store, your files, and then Vivaldi web browser. Let's go next. Using the desktop system tray, we already know what that is. That's over here. You can bring that up and all your hidden items are over here. Next, and then using desktop search, you can just start typing on the desktop. And it'll automatically pop up and I put in Dolphin, it says run Dolphin, locations, default applications. So you just start typing on the desktop and you can find that real quick. Then click next. Use the store to get more applications. We'll look at that here in a moment. And then theme mode. If you'd like to, please choose a theme mode. I'm going to go with dark and it switches over to dark. And let's go next. And then you got KDE Connect, as you can see down here, there's KDE Connect down here. If you've got your Android, you can download it from the Google Play Store and sync your phone with your system. It gives you a lot of power. You can answer messages on it. You can even use your phone as a remote control of sorts on some of the applications that you're using inside of Farron OS or any KDE distro for that matter. Reduce eye strain. You can configure your night color. I don't want to do that right now. And it says we're all done enjoy so i'm going to go ahead and let's enjoy and when you download it this is the wallpaper you get out of the box i kind of like it it's kind of flashy it's not too bright it's not too dark and then of course you do have your panel down here you do have your hidden icons there your internet connection sound is right there then you've got the store file manager vivaldi and then over here you're going to have show your desktop and then of course your app menu now let's go ahead and open up the store it's right there beside it so let's go ahead and open that up and take a look at how we're going to install software on the system. Okay, that's popped up. Let's go ahead and maximize it so it's easier to see. You've got recommendations right up here, and then you've got editor's picks down here. Let's say you wanted to install Blender. Let's just click on Blender, and it opens it up. It's got details here. It's got a description, and then you can come down through here and read some reviews if you want to. If you want to add your own review, you can click there, and then scroll up. And of course, if you wanted to install, you just click the install button right there. Let's go ahead and back up and let's try out the search feature let's see if we can find something like obs studio and it's going to search the repositories real quick and there you go obs pops up you just click on it and then you could install it from right here so that's the store it's quick it's clean it makes it easy to install applications that you need to use so i'm going to go ahead and close out of that and let's go ahead and open up the file manager which is Dolphin. Ooh, I do like the look. I like the theme there. You've got your usual suspects over here. And then, of course, you've got your home folders right here. And you guys have seen me cover Dolphin many a times. It's a very powerful file manager. It lets you get a lot done. And it's got a lot more features than a lot of your other file managers, like your Nemo's or Nautilus's and stuff like that. But at the same time, it's pretty lightweight and it stays out of your way and lets you get your job done. So let's go ahead and close out of that. Now, one of the things some people will be upset about is that Farron does come with Vivaldi out of the box. And one of the reasons that would upset people is because Vivaldi is part open source and part proprietary. I guess that would be the best way to say it. It's not 100% open source. But if you're somebody that truly wants to be 100% open source, of course, you can uninstall Vivaldi, go over to the store, download Firefox or de-googled Chromium or whatever you might want. That way you could use whatever web browser you wanted to. But I've been kind of playing around. I like Vivaldi. It's clean. Let's do a quick search. I want to see what they're using. They are using Microsoft Bing as opposed to Google. But we looked up eBuzz Central right there. So I just recommend that if you do download it, give Vivaldi a try. Take a spin around. If you don't like it, 
uninstall it and go ahead and put Firefox on there. This isn't a deal breaker with me for the simple fact that anything that comes on this operating system, I can get rid of and replace with something else I want to. That's just my personal opinion. There's going to be some purists out there that say, well, if it comes with it, I don't support it because it's not 100% open source. It is what it is. If you don't like it, remove it. Put something else on it. That's my two cents. Let's go ahead and close out of that. Now, next thing I want to go over before we go to the app menu, I want to show you some of the pre-customized looks that you get with Farron OS. So I'm going to go ahead and go over here and let's go to settings and we'll open this up and I'm going to go ahead and make it full screen so it's easier to see. As you can see, we've already picked dark mode. I'm going to go to appearance and show you some of the global themes that you get. Right out of the box, we're on Farron OS dark right here. That's what we're preset at. You do have a classical look. You've got doors, which is kind of a knockoff of windows. I like the way windows, doors. But if you wanted to switch it over to look more like that, you could just click on it. And it says here, you can change the appearance settings and you can change the desktop and window layout. So I'm gonna pick that. And let's go ahead and apply that. I minimized the global theme screen so you can kind of see what's going on here. So you've got a take on the windows wallpaper and you've got to take on the Windows layout. If you can see that down here, everything is moved to the center. Let's say you wanted something more like a Mac. You could come down here to Mac and Cheese. Now they do have it in light and dark. I'm just staying with dark because that's what my theme is at present. Let's go ahead and change appearance settings and desktop and window layout and click apply. And with Mac and Cheese, there's the look you get. You get kind of the dock layout down here. Your panel moves up top. Sorry, GNOME boxes popped in there. Then you got your drop down for your notifications right there. And then you got your hidden icons right there. And then your app launcher or about. Okay, so it, it sets it up pretty much like a Mac, at least layout wise. And it changes your icons as well. So that's a way you can pretty much change things around on this KDE environment. It comes pre laid out for you and it makes things easier. And it really makes you, if you want to change to your whole layout you can just click a button and you don't have to do anything it's already there so what i'm going to do is i'm going to go ahead and go back to the farron os dark so let's go ahead and click on that and let's change the desktop layout and apply and everything pops back to where it's supposed to be and so that's a way like i said you can change your layouts real quick icons wallpapers everything changes and just gives you a fresh look so let's go ahead and back out of here what i do want to do is i want to scroll down Go to About System, uh, KDE Plasma. That's something they've updated now. KDE Plasma 5.25.5 comes with this release of Farron OS. The previous was still on 5.24, QT version 5.15, and then the kernel version 5.15.0-48 generic. Like I said, I'm running inside boxes. Standard PC with an i5 processor. So let's go ahead and close out of that. And let's come back down here to the app menu. Got your favorites right here. You got all application. You got development, graphics. You got Krita, LibreOffice Draw. It doesn't come with GIMP out of the box. And you got Cocoa for your image viewer, internet. You've got Vivaldi. You've got Web Browser Manager. Now, this is what I want to point out. If you don't want Vivaldi, just come over to Web Browser Manager and open that up. And when it pops up, let's move it to the center of the screen. You've got Vivaldi, Google Chrome, Microsoft Edge, Mozilla Firefox, Brave, Opera, LibreWolf, Falcon, or GNOME Web. If you don't want Vivaldi, you can click on Install. You can come over here and install Firefox. You can do it right here from the Web Browser Manager. Makes it easy. I know you can just zip over to the store and do it, but this right here is just a, a tool that you have right there. Real quick, open it up, do what you need to do, and it makes things easy. So let's go ahead and close out of that and go back over here to internet and then multimedia you got vlc media player office you got the LibreOffice suite science and math you got LibreOffice math settings you've got boot repair discs language you do have synaptic package manager on here as well i'm going to go over this real quick just in case you haven't seen in my previous videos this is another way to get software on this distribution let's go ahead and close out of that and let's go ahead and make it bigger. Pretty much all you need to do is go up here and search. This is a type and search and install. Let's go OBS Studio, put in the name of the app you want, hit enter. It'll go out and do a search for it. There's OBS Studio. 
you just click it, check mark it, mark it for installation. It'll bring up the dependencies that it requires. You go ahead and mark those. And once you have everything marked, just click apply and it will install it. Now you can sit here and search for all the applications you want to install all at once, mark them all, and then click apply and it'll install them all at once if you want to. So that's Synaptic Package Manager. Let's close, let's quit. Back down here and we were at settings and then system, crash processes, donate, driver manager, cases guard. You do have GDB Package Manager as well. If you're familiar with Debian, you know that you can go online and find Deb packages. If you download a Deb package to install, all you got to do is go to Downloads, right click on that package, and choose Install with GDB Package Manager, and you can install it right from here. Now, if you've used Mint at all, or if you've ever just tried Mint, what you're seeing here is all the tools that are in Mint are available on Farron OS. You get the KDE desktop, you get the custom layouts you get the stability that Linux Mint has, and you get the beauty that Farron has. That, that's where I'm going here. If you don't want a boring looking desktop, and you're somebody that appreciates a little more flashy or a little bit more eye candy, Farron is definitely the way to go. So let's go back down to the app menu, go to settings, uh, system maintenance, we already looked at system. What I wanted to do was go ahead and open console, and I wanted to see if they have HTOP installed. And they don't, so let's run a top. Okay, this is another thing I want to show you. This is a KDE environment, Ubuntu base. And right now, with just console open, I'm running 737 megabytes of RAM. That's all I'm using out of the two gigs I have issued to it. So, quite honestly, that's lightweight. For KDE, that's lightweight. That's lighter than GNOME. If you don't believe me, go look at the numbers. KDE has trimmed itself down to be less resource intensive and it really makes running an OS smooth and beautiful at the same time. So I hope you guys understand what I'm saying about the beauty and the lightweight part of the KDE desktop environment. So let's come back down here. We just looked at system and then utilities. You've got calculator, character map, KWrite files, latte doc, spectacle for your screenshot tools. That's just a quick look, everybody. That's Farron OS. I can't preach this enough. It is a beautiful, Distribution. This is the distribution that my daughter presently has on her HP Stream 11 that she uses for school, and she loves it. She used to run Linux Mint KDE when she was younger. When they got rid of the KDE variant, we just switched over to Farron, and she's not regretted it one bit, and we have not had any issues. So let me tell you something. If you can have a 10-year-old up to 14-year-old run this operating system and not have problems, anybody out there can run it. What do you think? Are you somebody that already uses Farron OS or are you going to download it, throw it on a USB, put it into a virtual machine and take for a test drive? Let me know in the comments below. Please do me a favor before you leave today. Please like, subscribe, or follow my channel. The more likes I get keeps me in YouTube's algorithm, which means the information you just saw in this video, if it was helpful to you, it can be helpful to somebody else. And subscribe. It doesn't cost anything. And if you end up not liking me, you can always unsubscribe. If you like the channel and enjoy the videos that we are producing, we are on three separate platforms, YouTube, Utreon, and Odyssey. And you can become members on all three. On YouTube, it's only 99 cents. On Utreon, it's $2.99. And on Odyssey, it's $4. You can also buy us a cup of coffee, maybe go over to PayPal and throw us a donation, or go to Patreon and become a patron to the channel. All those links will be in the description below. As always, thank you so much for watching my video, and I will see you in the next video.